ready to celebrate back-to-back -back birthdays. Because on June 24th, First Lady Dorcas Wattis turned 60. If you'd like to provide a love offering, you can mail or drop off your gift at the church and help us celebrate First Lady turning 60. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Central Baptist Church online worship service. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. Hello to the family, Central Baptist, and welcome to all of those that are joining us for the first time. I'm the First Lady, Dorcas Wattis, and my husband is Pastor Gerald Wattis. And we're so glad that you chose us to worship with today. Central, we have a thank you card. It says, with appreciation. Thank you all so much for keeping, keeping us in your thoughts and prayers and that's from mr and mrs larry c haley and again family just continue to check our prayer list and our condolence list and keep our family in your prayers and your thoughts and phone calls and cards thank you so much for all that you do oh calling all graduates again so I've been announcing this for the last uh, three Sundays, but I want to stress that if you haven't sent in your child or your grandchild, or if you're an adult, your own information regarding your culmination or your graduation, please send that in by email with a picture and the grade that you're culminating from or the degree that you're receiving. And we need that by June 18th. So please make sure you get that in to our Central Baptist Church email address, greetings51 at aol.com. And we will put something together and share all of the graduates with the whole entire body. So but we do need you to send it in. Uh, and I know last year we had some that missed, so we want to make sure we, we missed that. We want to make sure that we get everyone this time. So please, if if you know of someone, make sure you let them know that we're looking for their information. And if you are a senior, a high school senior, please contact the church office for your scholarship package. And Central has a scholarship and there are some families in our church that have scholarships, but you must contact the church office and fill out the application in order to qualify. So thank you for uh, meeting the deadline on June 18th. So Central, last week I did announce that uh, we will not be using the 77977 anymore. It still works right now, but we, there is a new number. And the new number that you'll be texting to, you'll still be texting CBC Carson, but now you're going to text it to Area code 833-585-3663. That was 833-585-3663. So hopefully it's posted below and you can run it back if you didn't get the number and get the new number to text to. So uh, probably, I don't know exactly when, but eventually that 77977 will not be available. If it's your birthday today, happy birthday. If it's your anniversary, happy anniversary. All right, so Centro, you're, I just wanna say thank you. I wanna say thank you because this church has done so much over the last year and a few months. Even though you haven't been here in the building, you have been so supportive and we have accomplished many things while we were not in the building. 
So thank you so much for your generosity and for your giving. There are several ways that you can give. You can mail it in. You can drop it off. You can go to our website and give online. Or you can text CBC Carson to 833-585-3663. So thank you so much for your continued giving, for your generosity, and for this being a blessing to the body of Christ. So thank you so much for your attention to the announcements. Remember, if you have an announcement, please contact the church office and leave a message and we will get back to you or we will make sure your, your request gets in the announcement. So thank you so much. God bless you. It's time for worship and the word. Here we go. I know he 
Greetings and praise the Lord and welcome to all of you who are joining us right now in our online praise and worship service. I truly thank God for each and every one of you. My name is Gerald Waters, pastor here at Central Baptist Church, and uh, I just want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Just remembering our mission statement here is uh, winning people to Christ, loving people in Christ, and building disciples for Christ. As, uh, as we do, uh, as we do that, rather, we got to remember our motto. Our motto here is found in Romans 8 and 31. And it's, if God be for us, who can be against us when we do that, when we go forward? So with all that said, I just want to ask you all, uh, all, ask you all, and uh, after this message and everything, after the message, at the very end of this message, rather, to stay, stand by, because uh, after this recording, rather, and I'm going to bring an important announcement that uh, just might, you know, be of, a, of, of a, just might, that you might just want to hear. So stay tuned. At the end of this, I want to give you that message. Amen. So with that all said, we're going to go on and get into the word. Let's dive into God's word right now and trust God in doing this. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we humbly come before your throne of grace, thanking you right now, God, for you and the many things you've done for us. We thank you, O God, for your love, your mercy and your grace towards us. We thank you, O God, for sending your son who died for us on Calvary. So, Father, as we go forward, Father, I just ask you right now to use me to present your word. Use me as your vessel that I may bring forth a word that's going to touch the hearts of those that are watching and listening right now. So, Father, I just ask you to help me to decrease as you increase in me to bring forth your word. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. I ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, I would like for you to go with me right now to Ecclesiastes to, uh, chapter 12. We're going to go to uh, the 13th verse. Once again, that's Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, just two verses of scripture. And the text reads as follows. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So here I want to title this message, simply title it, Our Purpose in Life. Our Purpose in Life. So here in these passages of scripture, we're listening to the wise man, King Solomon here. He, and he's, in, he's concluding the last words about his life. And he is simply telling us that our purpose in this life is to respect God and to follow the principles that God gave us for living. So Solomon was simply saying that when, we, when it's all said and done, worship in reverence to God and adhere to his commands because this is what God expects from us. Because do you remember that God is doing what God is doing for uh, everything. See, God is going to judge every action of us, including that which is done in secret, whether it's evil or good. God is going to, uh, he's going to look at that. And one thing for sure, we're not here by accident. God put us all here on purpose and for his purpose. God explains it all in detail in Genesis chapter one, if you read that whole chapter in Genesis chapter one, which describes how an extraordinary loving uh, uh, God purposely made all things in just six days. And that also includes man and woman he made. And he made us all in his image and his likeness and to let us rule over the fish, the birds, the livestock. Uh, uh, creatures that move along the ground. So with that all said, I want to explain to you four things about the purpose in this life, our purpose that is in this life. And the first way in understanding our purpose in life 
is this. Our disobedience brought sin. Our disobedience brought sin. When we look at Romans 5 and 12, the Apostle Paul says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So Paul here is basically telling us to consider this. He's saying, consider this. Sin has entered the world through one man, and that's by Adam. And through that sin, death came right with it. And death spread rapidly, and it infected everybody everywhere. Everybody, everywhere, everybody on earth got engaged in this sin. It got connected to it, if you will. And since that time, everybody has been estranged from God. We look at Romans 3 and 23. Paul also says this, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Paul again tells us here in this same passage, everybody sinned and come short in our attempts to reach God. And without an anchoring relationship with the Lord, what happens is we're just wandering, wondering who we are. What exactly our purpose is. See, because we lost that connection with God through sin. And the thing is, and that's why many people today uh, uh, are just doing their own thing. Wandering, wondering why nothing ever works out for them. And they never find joy in their lives. They buy stuff, they get everything they can, and it's still not joy in their lives because these things get boring after a while. And I believe it's because many are still living in the disobedience and allowing sin to overrun them. Remember, our disobedience is what brought on the sin, if we think about it. There are many passages when we look at throughout the Bible, uh, throughout, the, throughout Proverbs especially, that give us guidance towards living godly lives. And I believe that Proverbs gives us practical advice for everyday obedient kind of living directly from the wise man himself. So when we think about it, someone uh, 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 just said one time, if Proverbs was part of a shoe, it would be the soul. Why I say that is because it's where the rubber seriously meets the road. I love that statement there. It's where the rubber meets the road. It suits it very well. We all must realize that our purpose in this life is to always put God at the top of our list, regardless of what that list is. We can, uh, we can ask ourselves the question, have I repented for any disobedience I've committed today? Have I asked God to forgive me for what I've done in traffic, if I've cut someone off, if I said something that's not right, if I looked at someone strange, anything, have I asked God for his forgiveness? We look back at Genesis 1 and 26, God says this, and let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So what do we find here? We find here God is creating humanity in his image, fashioned according to his likeness and given humanity, which is us rather, the authority over all the earth, the fish, the birds, the domesticated animals, the small creeping uh, critters and, and, and the entire earth. And he gave man the opportunity to name these creatures and join him in creation. Our heavenly creator was trying to fellowship with us. But the one command that God gave, we messed it up by allowing ourselves to get hoodwinked. In other words, let me put, it to a, uh, put that word to a better meaning to you. In other words, our adversary deceived us, tricked, and lied to us. See, God created us to reflect his image, and his character, in our love, our patience, and our forgiveness, our kindness, and in our faithfulness. Listen, folks. Folks, please listen. Our disobedience brought on sin. Our purpose in life is to reflect him, 
reflect God. God made man and woman at the highest point of creation and neither sex uh, uh, is exalted nor is depreciated. See, God loves everybody. He never lets us down, but we let him down frequently and constantly we let God down. And I believe this, moving on to, to, to my, excuse me, moving on to my second way to understanding our purpose in life is this, to rethink and repent. Rethink and repent. Acts 17, 29 and 30, the Apostle Paul was saying this, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we are not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at it, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So in other words, Paul is simply saying that we are indeed offspring of God's most creative act. But we shouldn't think of God as our own artifact, like something made with our own hands, as if God was this simply, uh, simply a, a combination of gold, silver, and stone. But the Apostle Paul says this, no, don't think of God like that. God has so patiently tolerated all the mess and ignorance in the past. But now God says it is time for all of us to rethink our lives and repent. Repent, turn 180 from the old way by rejecting all this bad, unenlightened assumptions. The Apostle Paul was simply saying, it's time for everybody everywhere to repent and recognize Jesus Christ died in our place, taking our punishment for our sins upon himself so that we can be reconciled back to God. And I mean, this is, this is really, this is, this really need to be uh, thought about a lot. We need to really diagnose or marinate this in our mind because what the Apostle Paul was conveying is if we don't repent, we will have a complete and forever separation from God, being tormented forever, that is. The Apostle Paul was not just holding uh, anything back. Paul was putting it all forward. He was shooting straight, straight at the point, because Paul's point was it's either going to be blessing or punishment, one or the other. And our purpose in life is all about our loving Heavenly Father. When we look at Romans 5, 6 through 8, the Apostle Paul says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So what is Paul saying here? Paul is simply saying when the time was right, Jesus Christ died for every single one of us who was weak, powerless, and far from God. And, and Paul said, how often you find someone who was willing to die for even an upright man. But let's rethink this all. Let's think it all. Think about it. Rethink the whole thing. Uh, uh, how we were yet wasting our lives away in sin. God showed up and showed us his powerful love in a very real displaying of it. And that is that Jesus Christ died in our place. We couldn't do it. Jesus died to save us. Jesus Christ died in our place. He took the punishment for our sins upon himself. And then we can look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. And the apostle Paul says this, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In other words, God has orchestrated all this for Jesus to be made the full payment for our sin mess, whereas Jesus' death makes us right with God. 
See, Jesus never sinned. So because Jesus became sin for us so that in him we might embody the very righteousness of God. And it was through Jesus Christ's resurrection that he, Jesus that is, conquered sin and death and made it possible for us to have a relationship with God. And that, in that, he bridged the relationship that was cut off or fractured at the fall of man. So anyone who has never accepted Christ Jesus as their Lord, the Lord of their life, needs to rethink and repent ASAP. And I'm talking about yesterday. Here's why. Second Peter three and nine. Peter says this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackless, but is long suffering to, uh, to, uh, towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. So Peter's simply saying something similar that the Lord is not slow about putting into practice his promise. Our Lord is enormously patient and extremely merciful to you and every single one of us. Our Lord does not want anyone to be left out of his kingdom and glory, but he wants everybody to turn away from, their, from uh, following their own ways and to turn to God and God's ways. Let our ways go and grab hold of God's ways, in other words. And that's by rethinking and repenting and, uh, and faith in Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Any person giving their life to Christ they are set free from sin. And the main point is just, the main point is this. God's word tells us clearly that God wants everybody, all of us to come to repentance. And I'll tell you this thing. If today was your last day here on earth alive, the question that I ask and I pose to you, are you ready to meet your maker? Folks, we must live in purpose. God's purpose, that is, that is our purpose in life is all about God's business. First, Jesus Christ, his second coming will be sudden. We got to remember that. Moving on to my third way of understanding our purpose in life is this here. Is to perform duties and services for God. Is to perform duties and services for God. Looking at 1 Corinthians 15, 58, the Apostle Paul says this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So in other words, the Apostle Paul is saying, for this reason, my brothers and sisters, hear me. Just stay firmly planted. Be unshakable. Keep on doing the work of the Lord. Keep on doing his service, he's talking about. Because all your labor is not for nothing when you are doing it for God, when you're doing this work for God. Paul here in 1 Corinthians 15, 58 was concluding the future resurrection of our earthly bodies. We're being encouraged to remain faithful at serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're also being reminded that we are doing uh, excuse me, what we are doing by serving is not going to be for nothing. There's nothing that we have to fear. Keep working and serving him. As he said, it's not in vain. Now, if you notice that in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, that the first word, that notice that the, the, first, the first word the apostle Paul uses there is the word therefore. And I believe that when we are studying God's word, we should always go back a few verses prior to find out what it is there for. You get that two words, there for, you get it? You want to find out what therefore is there for. Anyway, backing up a few verses, let's look at it. We back up a few verses we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, the Apostle Paul says this, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I only, uh, only uh, uh, want to read 
just you this verse 57 but to fully understand what Paul was talking about when he said therefore you would have to go back to verse 35 where Paul explains about the resurrection of the body but What's important is knowing that we, as we are performing the duties and services for God, they are not for nothing. We are not earning salvation. That's, a, that's guaranteed already. And let me say that again. Say that one more time for folks who, who, who's not listening uh, or misunderstand this. We are not working to earn salvation. Not that was already done when we confessed Jesus as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We confessed him. We accepted him by faith. It's a one-time deal. I can't say that enough. One time. But we are servants of the Most High God. The Holy Spirit in us motivates us to serve the Lord. Because in Matthew 28 and 18, Jesus said this. And Jesus came and uh, spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. So here, uh, Jesus was uh, given his, his, his departing assignment to his disciples. He was giving them what's called the Great Commission, which is instructions or command, order or duty, whichever one you want to use or you could use them all. Jesus was simply saying to them all, I am speaking with the authority of God who has commanded me to give you all this commission, which is to go out and make disciples in all nations that means go down the street go around the corner go to store on your job wherever you can jesus is also telling them uh, 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 to ceremonial wash them meaning baptize them in the triune name of god and that is the name of the father son and the holy ghost and then jesus was telling them and us that is to disciple them and Jesus meant teaching them from the same practices and postures that Jesus had taught them, those, dis those apostles or disciples rather. Furthermore, Jesus told them and us, and us, he said this, to show them how to follow the commands that he laid down for all of us and his followers. And Jesus closed out with these words to his nature. And he says, I will be with you as you go doing this day after day after day after day. I will be with you always. Even when the end of the world comes, I got you. I'm with you. It's another way of putting it. Oh, listen, listen. All that that right there, what Jesus did and said is the performing duties and services for God. And remember this, Jesus uh, remember, that was Jesus' great commission, Jesus' great command, Jesus' great instruction, Jesus' great duty, or the homework, or excuse me, the street work, or out there work that Jesus gave us all, all those that are followers, that is our purpose in life, folks. That is our purpose. Listen, folks, we are commanded to spread the gospel we're not commanded to spread no gossip, but spread the gospel, which is easier for us to do sometimes. That gossip can be a little good. We're good at that. But Jesus commands us to go tell other folks the gospel and make them disciples for the kingdom. There's no way around that. That's Jesus' command as he was commissioning uh, disciples and us as well. And we have good news. We have good news. Let's go tell it. Let's go tell it. Tell it all. And there's a saying that goes like this. What a Christian won't do. What a Christian won't do for the truth. And what a cult will do for a lie. A cult is pounding the streets and knocking on doors and grabbing folks and leading them into this, this, these cults with spreading false doctrine and the Christians 
who are uh, supposed to be spreading the gospel are keeping it all to themselves. We got to do better, folks. I love the way my late father-in-law in the ministry, uh, 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 Pastor Bugs, the late Pastor uh, Emeritus David Bugs said it. He said this, and it was similar to this. I might be a little off. He says, everyone, everyone win one to Christ. And his prayer to all of us, he said when he was pastor was, Lord, put some, someone in my way, seeing as I won't go out of my way to tell them about Jesus. What a statement. I just love that. But listen, folks, our purpose in life is, again, to perform the duties and services for God. We are to look for the lost and win them to Jesus Christ. We live in a fallen world and our purpose is to make Christ Jesus known to other folks. God created us and gave us life to live in this life, to be about his life. My fourth uh, way to understanding our purpose in life is this, to be prepared for eternity, to be prepared for eternity. We look at Hebrews 9 and 27, the writer says this, and that is, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So in other words, when we look at this, we all have to die physically one day. And then after we die, then we experience a judgment. To the, the end of our purpose in life is to get ourselves ready for the inevitable thing. And that is a physical death. And that journey that we all, that's a journey that we all have to take one day. One day we have to take that journey. We all are destined to physically die one of these days and then we face judgment. We look at Mark 8, 6, excuse me, 8, 36 and 37. Jesus says this, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? That's pretty self-explanatory right there. Jesus simply says, uh, what gain is there if we're, uh, if we're uh, 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 worldly, wealthy, have all this stuff loaded with money and all the doodads and stuff, and in turn lose our soul in the process. Jesus consistently pointed folks to heavenly values or having an eternal perspective. Jesus' point was, what, we can, uh, what can anybody give in exchange for their very soul is what Jesus was doing. Nothing in this life is worth eternal separation from God. Nothing at all. All I want to do in this life, me personally, is know God, serve God, glorify God, honor God, praise God, tell other folks about, about God, pray to God, and the list goes on. If it's all about doing it for my heavenly Father, that's what life should be about for everyone. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31 the Apostle Paul says this, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do it all to the glory of God. Our purpose in life is to do everything to the glory of God. The love of God should be shining bright like bright lights, allowing the world to know who we are. <coughs> Excuse me. We shouldn't be hiding Jesus under no uh, uh, tabletop or anything. We need to let the light of the Lord shine through us, showing the world that we belong to a loving Savior. Our purpose is to be thankful to God, giving him glory, worshiping him in adoration. Looking at Hebrews 13 and 15, the writer says this. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. In other words, through Jesus Christ, then let us keep on offering to God our own sacrifice. That is the praise of our lips. That is us confessing Jesus without stopping, telling everybody, just like the song that uh, the song we sing called Can't Stop, praising his name. That song there rings out to us. We don't sing the songs, but let's have meaning and purpose and make sure they're, 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 they're marinating in our mind. Are we really doing these that we sing about? We should not stop praising Jesus' name. 
That is our purpose in life. Our purpose in life. That is being prepared for eternity because we are joyful from grateful hearts. And when we listen, folks, and when we think about praise, praise is many times our response to something that is directly, that directly benefits us. And the point is that we can find it easy to praise God when he, has, when he has blessed us, helped us, and protected us. And that's when we feel generous toward him, toward God, that is. We can sing, worship, and talk about how good God is. We see what, what he has done for us. However, however, on the other hand, when we feel that God didn't work out something we wanted, like the medical report was bad, or, or the spouse says something ain't right and says she wants or he wants out, the kids are not acting right. Those are times when God seems silent to us. And that's when we say, I don't feel like praising. We can't see any of God's goodness because our circumstances are telling us that God has forgotten about us. Listen, folks, God is still and can be trusted, still can be trusted regardless when we choose to praise God, regardless of the storms, we're operating out of purpose in this life because we are still honoring God and allowing our faith to grow deeper. Remember what Hebrews 13, 15 said that I read a little while ago. Let us offer a sacrifice of praise. And then it says continually. Our purpose in life is to keep on praising him. Praise God is, is not based on our opinion of God's job performance or what God does or doesn't do for us. Praise is not based on rewards. Our purpose in life is to praise God regardless of what's going on. We have matured when we stepped up to that, that, uh, that stage right there. Why do we think God's word call it true praise? True praise is because true praise is a praise that continues regardless of our circumstances and it flows continually directly from a true heart in good times and in bad times. Looking at Acts 16 and 25, the text says this, and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. We look back early in verse 22, the Bible says that Paul and Silas were stripped of their clothes and beaten the, in the public square with rods. Then verse 23, it says, the Bible says that they were flogged mercilessly. Then they were thrown into a prison cell and chains put on them. However, 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 they didn't sit up there moaning and groaning. They were praising and singing hymns to God. The other prisoners heard them too as they were singing and praising him. Earthquakes shook up the place. They knew that this was not about themselves. They were focusing on God's purpose because our purpose should be to be focused on God when we're doing just that. We are prepared ourselves for eternity knowing because just like Paul and Silas, while they were there going through all what they went through, and everything that happened, they managed to win a soldier and the soldier's family with their praising because the soldier was afraid that something was, they was going to leave. Paul had to say, hey, we still here. Ain't nobody left. So listen, folks, regardless of our circumstances, we too should praise God because, if, if, listen, if it should have to, uh, cost them their lives, they knew where they were going to be going. They knew where they were going. These men were prepared for eternity. They didn't care about themselves. They were more focused on eternal, eternal things. Listen, folks, hear me. Our purpose in this life, as God originally created us, was, uh, uh, was and is to glorify God, enjoy fellowship with him. We glorify God and enjoy how Right now, folks, right now, we enjoy him right now. and we We'll be able to enjoy him forever. So in closing, we must fully understand that we are not here permanently. 
We must be sure that we are in a right relationship with God because having a right relationship with God starts with acknowledging that we are sinners before him through confession and repentance. We must make sure that we have placed our faith in Jesus Christ as the Lord of our lives. He got to be Lord of all because if not Lord of all, he's sometimes maybe not Lord at all. Our purpose in life is to give our lives to Jesus Christ and be sure that we have openly declared Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives. And then we must believe in our heart that God is the leader of our life and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And believe me, you'll be saved when you believe that. I believe in Ephesians chapter two, verse eight and nine, the apostle Paul says, for by grace, ye are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What's Paul talking about here? For it's by grace that, that we have been saved. We receive it through faith. It is not any of our works or our efforts. It is God's gift. That's pure and simple to us. We can't earn no uh, salvation. No, not anyone of us can do that. Or have anyone ever did? Oh, we can. We cannot do that. So we don't go around boasting that we, uh, we that you must do something amazing to get this salvation. Never, ever. Salvation is not God's reward for good deeds. The truth is this. The truth is that salvation is God's gift through Jesus Christ. Grace and faith is what makes salvation real in us, folks. Thank God Almighty for Jesus Christ, because the truth about it is when you have Jesus Christ, you have what you need to be prepared for eternity. The love of us. He loved us so much that, that he sent his only begotten son to die in our place. When they nailed him on the cross, God gave the best that he had. God paid dearly with the life of his son, Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, God paid the highest price that he could pay by sending his son, his ransom. And Jesus Christ accepted our punishment, the punishment we should have got by paying the debt that we owed with this life. Listen, folks, Jesus offered us new life, new life that brought for us, that he bought for us, rather. When we share the gospel with other folks who don't know Christ, our love must be just like Jesus Christ's love. Our purpose in life is to share the gospel with folks that's lost. Eternal life is God's life embodied in Jesus Christ. Understanding, folks, that when we have Jesus in us, share him with others. That means to be prepared for eternity, bringing others with us to eternity. That's our purpose. That's what God gave us to do because it all, it's all because of Jesus Christ's life, death, burial, and his resurrection as to our purpose in life. So just to recap these four ways of understanding our purpose in life is number one, our disobedience brought sin. Sin entered through man's disobedience and death came with it and death spread rapidly. Now we needed an anchoring relationship back to God because we were wandering all over the place. We were just basically wondering who we are and had no purpose, just plain lost folks. And then number two, we need to rethink and repent. To rethink and repent. Our loving God patiently tolerated all of our, our mess and ignorance in, in, in the past, present, and even still in the future. So we must stop and rethink and repent. Turn around, turn away from that. 180. Everybody must realize that Jesus Christ died in our place, taking our punishment for our sin mess so that we can be reconciled back to God. And then number three, number three is this to perform duties and services for God is our purpose in life. To perform duties and services for God. We are to remain faithful to God in our serving the Lord Jesus Christ and know that what we do for the Lord will last and it's not for nothing. 
We are not earning our salvation. That's already guaranteed. We are servants of the Most High God with the Holy Spirit's power that is in us to motivate us to serve. And then finally, number four, to be prepared for eternity. Our purpose is to be prepared for eternity. We must all be prepared to die one day. Then we will experience the judgment. So we must be prepared for eternity. We can't afford to lose our souls chasing worldly stuff and all this worldly pleasurable stuff. We must know that know God, serve God, glorify God, honor God, praise God, be thankful to God, pray to God, tell other folks about our loving God, trust God, and the list goes on. God bless you. God keep each and every one of you. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. I thank you all. I thank you all for tuning in with us and joining us in our online worship service. We look forward to you joining us again next week. And thank you all again for your generosity and supporting this ministry and everything you do and all that you do for us. We just want to continue to do kingdom work. There may be one out there that have never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity right now. You don't want to go another minute without Jesus being the Lord of your life. It's the most important thing you can do in your life is accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you want to do that, I can help you with it. The Bible tells us very clearly in Romans 10 and 13, for whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. You can call upon him right now. All you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus came, died, and rose again for you and I. And he said he'll come in to you. And the thing that you must do is this here. You must confess it. And if you want to right now, you, I can go over the, plan of salva uh, the prayer of salvation or the sinner's prayer right now with you. Right now, right where you are. So if you want to accept Christ, you never accepted him, you can just say this prayer. But you got to truly mean every word of it if you want to accept him. Mean it from your heart. If you want to accept him, just repeat these words after me. Simply bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat these words. Just simply say, Lord God, I am a sinner. I am sorry for all my sins. I repent of my sins. Please have mercy on me, Lord, and save me right now. I believe that Jesus came, died, and rose again for my sins. I ask Jesus to come into my heart right now and be the Lord of my life. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that simple prayer right there, you are now a born-again believer. You are now in the family of God. I just want to congratulate you and welcome you into the family of God, knowing that God has got great plans for you. Just stay focused. Be steadfast. Trust God in this process. The next step you must do is find you a good Bible teaching church in your area. If you need a church home and you're in the air, local area of Carson, California or close by, we have room. We have room for you. The building is closed right now, but we will be opening soon. And I want to say to you that you can call that number on your screen, leave your name and number, and someone will get back with you to get more information from you. And we look forward to seeing you if you uh, decide to uh, join us in fellowship with us. The next thing you do is get a good Bible. Start studying it. And at the same time, your electronic device, your, your phone, get the Bible app on there and start studying it. When you don't have your uh, regular uh, uh, Bible with you, you'd have it on your phone. You could still study the Word of God. There are great resources on there that will help you even more, daily devotionals and so forth. But you need to get your face in that Word. Get your face in the Word. Start studying. The next thing you must do, surround yourself around good Christian folks that's going to encourage you, that's going to build you up, that's going to disciple you. Surround yourself with these folks. And listen, while you're doing this, well, since you've accepted Christ, the enemy is mad right now. Our adversary, he's hot. He's mad. So the thing you must do is stay focused. Don't be distracted, but continue to trust God. Pray, ask God for guidance, and watch what he'll do in your life. 
I want to again say congratulations and God bless you and welcome to the family of God. And with all that said, I want to thank every one of you for again for joining us. Thank you for your generosity in supporting this ministry. Please don't stop. Continue to support us. We need your financial help to continue to do kingdom work. Thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for the love you show us. Uh, I, I we'll see you next week. God bless you. I love you all. Hello, everyone. I pray that you all are healthy and well. My name is Pastor Gerald Wattis of Central Baptist Church, and it's been more than a year since we've gathered in the building, and the Lord has put something on my heart. It's time to gather again in the building. That's heavy, the Lord put on me. And the date is gonna be July 18, 2021 at 10 a.m., which is our church anniversary. And we'll be practicing safety protocol. We will also have overflow seating. Now you must wear your mask, and if you don't have one, don't worry about it. We will provide one for you. And seating as well as the service is going to be very different from what some of you remember. But let's remember, God is still the same as he was before. God don't change. And this is going to be a casual dress day. So come comfortable, but not too comfortable. Now, if you don't feel comfortable coming back to service, that is, no worries. Don't worry about it. We're not mad at you. Pray about it and let the Lord lead you. We will still be streaming live our service. So if you're ready to get your praise on, in person that is, then come on out on July 18, 2021 at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you and may God keep you.